This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Welcome back to The Watch Guys. I hope you are safe and well. This week it's the Ultimate Stealth Daytona, a precious metal variant with a blue dial. It really should be one of the hottest watches in the world, but actually it's pretty unloved and unknown. This week's watch, ladies and gentlemen, is the Rolex Daytona 116509, the Stealth Blue Daytona. This, my friends, is the Rolex Daytona in white gold with a blue dial. Reference 116509. And yes, it is one of the watches mentioned by John Mayer in that Hodinky episode. You won't have seen a lot about this watch on YouTube or social media, mainly because A, they're quite rare, and B, they're pretty anonymous. No one really notices them. It was launched in 2016, the same year that we got the new ceramic bezel Daytonas in white and black dials, and of course that was the same year that the Lord saw fit to give us the green dial yellow gold Daytona. So no wonder the blue dial was overlooked. Pretty soon this watch will be quietly discontinued, and you know what? Most people won't even notice. But today we're going to change all of that. I'm going to talk in detail about how this watch makes me feel, the history of the Daytona, the current beguiling Daytona range, the unboxing, and of course the buying story. So are you up for this? Good. Let's do this. Before we get fully into this episode, a quick wristwatch check, and under the black jumper this week, I have a new edition, my very first Vacheron Constantin. It is an overseas self-winding, a very sought-after watch these days. It's 41 millimeters in steel, and it's reference 4500V110AB128. It has an absolutely stunning bright blue dial. It's got three different straps which are easily interchangeable. It's super classy and it's become an instant classic. And there'll be a full episode on this little baby in the future. But this week, of course, it's all about this watch. The white gold Daytona with the blue dial. Reference 116509. Probably fair to say the most anonymous in the Daytona range and as a consequence, pretty much unloved. Now it's 18 karat white gold, which means it's got a unique luster to it that you get from those white gold models. But to the untrained eye, it looks just like stainless steel. This, my friends, is stealth wealth. This is a 40 millimeter watch on a pre-ceramic Daytona configuration, which means it looks old even though it's brand new. The familiar tachymetric scale is engraved onto the white gold bezel in an unpretentious display of practicality. But with this watch, it's all about that bright blue dial and the red rings in the subdials and the red Daytona lettering in the middle, which actually strobes when you look at it and makes the dial pop. In pictures, this dial looks vibrant, but actually in real life, it's incredibly subtle, and it only really comes to life in bright sunlight. As it's a Rolex Daytona, you've got the crown in the middle, and then you've got two screw-down pushers either side of it, all in white gold. To operate the chronograph properly, of course, you have to unscrew the pushers first, thereby making them available to be pushed, and then you click the top one to start the stopwatch, you click it again to stop it, and then the bottom one you click to reset it to the 12 o'clock position. All very standard Rolex Cosmograph Daytona. And now since we're in a Daytona mood, how about the history of this iconic Rolex model? Rolex first introduced the Chronograph Cosmograph in 1963. Reference number 6239, here it is. It was designed for racing drivers, which meant it had the tachymetric scale on it, which would allow you to measure speed over distance. As you can see, it had a black dial with contrasting white subdials, and it was a manual winding watch. Originally, the Cosmograph was called the Le Mans, but after Rolex became the official timekeeper of the Daytona Beach Speedway, it later rechristened it the Daytona. The Daytona International Speedway, incidentally, at the time when it was built in 1959, was the fastest circuit in America. It was also quite likely that this was called the Daytona to help ingratiate Rolex into the American market, and it certainly did that. 
Rolex Daytona watches are still given to the winners of the Daytona race and many races around the world, even today. In 1965, the Daytona got screw down chronograph pushers rather than the exposed ones. That was to help water resistance and it also led to the fact that Oyster then came onto the dial. Remember at this point, all hand wound Daytonas use the Calibre 72 Vijou movement. Over the 60s and 70s, there were various important references in the Daytona bloodline, including the Paul Newman dials, which have achieved almost mythical status. You can tell a Paul Newman dial by the fact that it uses square blocks in the subdials and a different font. It also has an additional seconds counter around the inside of the dial itself, right up flush with the bezel. Then in 1988 came the first big change for the Daytona and it was the self-winding 4030 movement, which put an end to hand-wound Daytonas and ushered in a new era of ease of use. This was also the time that superlative chronometer appeared on the dial and the new 40 millimeter case came with new hands, new hour markers and larger subdials. These models are now known as the Zenith Daytonas because they featured a modified version of the Zenith Primero movement. Then just 12 years later in the year 2000, Rolex ditched that Zenith movement and brought in their own in-house 4130 movement, which is what persists even to this day. The 4130 had 60% less components than the previous movement and also actually had Daytona written on it. And then in 2016 came the current ceramic bezel version of the Daytona in white dial and black dial form. Rolex continues to sponsor many of the most important races on the calendar, including the 24 hour of Le Mans, Formula One, and of course the Daytona race itself. And it also has brand ambassadors like Sir Jackie Stewart and Mark Webber. Rolex has remained fully ingrained in the motorsport world since the 50s. And it's hard to imagine a race without Rolex banners all over the place as the cars whiz by. The Rolex Daytona range has grown out of all proportion and to my mind, there's far too many models. I can't think of any that have actually been discontinued in the last six years, but certainly many have been added. As you can see here, just recently Rolex added the meteorite dial version, and before that it was all about the Oysterflex rubber straps. You can get Daytonas in steel, yellow gold, rose gold and platinum, and you can get plain dials and those with diamond hour markers. For the record, I'm not a big fan of diamonds on the hour markers for Daytonas, and I absolutely hate them on Oysterflex straps. And I find the meteorite dial absolutely horrendous. So that cuts down the range quite a bit for me. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I actually do not have one of the standard ceramic white or black dial Daytonas still. Saw it out Rolex. In fact, apart from the ceramic, the only one I'm really missing is the white gold with the steel baton dial. So that real classic looking watch. That's got a real old school charm about it. And I have to say, I've been tempted to get that into the collection. And now it's time for Unboxo Vision. So let's go into the packaging of this Rolex Daytona white gold. Of course, because it's Rolex, I'm not expecting any surprises. And there we are. Once you pull out the outer slip and open up the case, you've got the now familiar green ruche effect box with the gold Rolex logo on it. And you open it up and there's the watch and also the Rolex seal sat next to it. You'll always want to keep as much of that as possible. In the secret compartment at the back, we've got the Rolex registration card with all the details on it. In this case, the details of the original first owner. The guarantee manual is in the back of the leather wallet. And of course, you've got the full Cosmograph Daytona instruction manual. Tells you all about how you wind the watch, how you make use of all of its functions. And then the watch itself sitting there on its little cream cushion, looking pretty resplendent. But you can see here, that blue is just not popping out of the dial, is it? So why do I find this watch so interesting? Well, to be honest, for the same reason John Mayer does, it's the Stealth Daytona, the one that's right below the radar and not many people own. This particular watch, reference 116509, is a 2019 watch. It of course has the 4130 movement in it, it's self-winding, and it's 40 millimeters with a white gold case and bracelet. 
It's expensive due to its precious metal, but of course it just looks like steel, so no one really knows what you've got. That blue dial is of course lovely, but it's not vivid, and actually in most conditions you don't even notice it, it just looks black. Most of the time it's completely under the radar, no one will comment on it, and you can therefore pretty much wear it anywhere. I bought it at the time when I thought I would never get one of the green dial Daytonas, so it was my only chance really to get one of those really cool pre-ceramic models. And I have to say it has done me quite well, it's increased its value significantly, and these watches now if you look on the right sites you'll find that they're trading for about 40 to 45 thousand pounds, well up on the original 30,000 pounds, perhaps fueled by discontinuation rumours. And just to have interest, let's find out how much this weighs compared to the yellow gold. Yellow gold Daytona, 208 grams. White gold, 220 grams. It's actually heavier than the yellow gold. But you didn't expect that, did you? This watch is all about that blue dial, and it's just a bit of a shame that actually it's not more vibrant. In fact, a bit more like this Vacheron Overseas self-winding. I do really like the way that you've got red writing on there. I like the fact that you've got 18 karat gold around the hour markers, and it is a classy item, but it doesn't particularly stand out, and it doesn't have any features that really make me excited. I don't know what it is, but this once treasured possession is starting to leave me a bit cold. It's just not doing it for me, and I really don't know what the issue is. Maybe it's now overshadowed by the green dial, which has of course arrived in the collection. Either way, this watch is rarely on my wrist, and I'm in the position now where I could easily see myself letting it go. Sacrilege, I know. I think if you asked me whether I'd swap this blue dial for the steel baton, I'd do it in a heartbeat. I just find the other one far more attractive. So what's the buying story of this watch? Well, surprisingly, it did not come from one of my usual sources. I actually purchased it from Zoops, which is a company set up by the two McKenzie brothers in Bishop Stalford, and they specialize in watches, jewelry, and handbags. And this was the first watch that I bought from them. I pretty much had decided that I was never going to get the green dial, it was never going to come in. So I thought I'd put the word out that I was looking for this blue dial, and actually the guys at Zoops came up trumps and managed to secure me one. That of course means I'm not the first owner, and perhaps that's also one of the reasons why I'm happy to let this watch go. So there we are, what are my final thoughts on this white gold blue dial Daytona? Well obviously it's a beautiful watch and many of you I'm sure would kill to get hold of one, but I think when you've seen a lot of the others, and when a lot of the others have got special stories personal to you, you can possibly see why this one sits on the fringe of the collection and why I'd probably be happy to let it go. I do love the additional weight and the luster that you get from the white gold Rolexes, that's not in doubt, and the blue dial is great, but I just think it could be a little bit more wow, and it just isn't. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode on the blue dial white gold Rolex Daytona. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful and entertaining. If you like what I'm doing on the watchguys.tv, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. I can't get enough of them. And there'll be another episode along next week.